algorithm and let's get started. Number 10 on the list is going to be biology. Now there's a ton of different types of biology out there, but even the best one, which is just normal biology, only ranks about 420 out of 835 possible degrees. Now I do feel bad about putting this one on here because by no means do I think that this knowledge is useless. But I think as a college degree from a personal finance perspective, this one is extremely overrated. Now let me explain why. I've known several people who have gone through undergrad, got their biology degree thinking that they would be able to to easily get a good job afterwards, and then they weren't able to. Now, one of them went all the way to getting her PhD in biology in order to get the job that she wanted. That's nuts if you ask me, and that's a huge red flag in my opinion that the degree is not worth it. When it comes to undergraduate degrees, you want to secure the bag. You wanna make sure that just with that four-year degree that you can get a job. At that point, if you choose to go back in order to further your education and get a master's or a doctorate, that's great, but at least you always have the choice to get a job at the four year mark. Remember, it should always be an option, not something that you have to do. And that's why biology is the second most regretted degree by graduates. And it's not necessarily that a biology degree is the worst, it's just so many people get this degree thinking that it's gonna get them a good job, but unfortunately the actual value of the degree doesn't match up with the perception of it. Number nine on the list is going to be psychology. And this is another degree that in my opinion is extremely overrated. This one ranks about 584 out of 835 possible degrees. And I think out of all the degrees that I talk about, this one has to get me the most hate. People think that I'm the devil for saying that this one's bad. Now this one's kind of like biology where it's pretty overrated, but in my opinion, I think it might actually be the most overrated degree out of any of them out there. And the reason for that is because biology has about 64,000 people graduating every year. Psychology's got over 100,000 graduates a year. They are pumping out psychology bachelors like a production line. Now, as you probably know, if you watch my channel, there's pretty much no jobs available for a four-year psychology degree. And because of that, so many people are forced to go to extremely expensive graduate school, take on those awful grad plus loans in order to even be able to have a chance of getting a job. Now, if you've been following my channel, I tell people to avoid graduate school except in very specific circumstances. It's much better to secure the bag, so to speak, with your undergrad degree. And then once you've done that, once once you've gotten a degree where you can get a good job, then maybe consider going back to school and furthering your education. Number eight on the list is going to be environmental related degrees. And there are a lot of them, but I'm just gonna go ahead and choose environmental health science. This one is ranked 518 out of 835 possible degrees. Now this is another thing that you'll see these thirsty colleges doing over and over and over again, where they'll figure out a buzzword, a buzzword that's you know got a lot of people really excited. You know, a lot of people are passionate about the environment. Then they'll tack on health sciences or sciences or technology or engineering or all these different other words that make it seem like it's a legitimate major where you're gonna be able to get a job afterwards. This is basically the equivalent of someone putting entrepreneur on their Tinder profile because of the fact that they bought $3.50 worth of Bitcoin. Two words, entrepreneurship. But the thing that almost nobody talks about is that this is not going to end up being a good financial decision the vast majority of the time. The truth is the numbers on these degrees are awful and they're probably not gonna help you land a degree in the natural energy industry. A lot of people wanna be involved in these industries and because of that, there's a huge imbalance in supply and demand. So colleges being the businesses that they are have adapted to the excess demand and they've created a bunch of different degrees that have the word environmental in it to see how many suckers, I mean, fit bite. Why major in biology when you can major in environmental biology? Or how about we throw in some other buzzwords and we go for a degree where it's an environmental resource manager? I mean, with the word management in it, it must be a really high paying skill set, right? Nope, that one's even worse. Now, before you freak out, dislike the video, leave a bunch of hater comments. You know, if you're passionate about environmental related stuff, that's awesome, cool, that's your thing. There's a ton of degrees out there that are not so good, but there's also a few that are decent. All I'm saying is make sure to do your research research. Just because it has the word environmental in it, doesn't mean it's going to be a good investment. Number seven on the list is going to be agriculture. Now, this is one where it might sound like it would rank really well, but in reality, it just doesn't. This is all about crops and farming and you know the food production industry. And the truth is, in order to learn about this industry, like being a farmer, for instance, you're not gonna learn how to do it in a classroom. The best thing for you to do would be to just work on a farm, for instance, if you wanna become a farmer, 
learn the industry, learn the trade, and then eventually you can start your own. The way I think about degrees like this is there are certain skills where you really just can't learn them out of a book or in a classroom setting. Now imagine if they made a basketball major, for instance. Do you think that you could learn how to be an elite basketball player by reading out of a book or being in a classroom? How are you gonna learn how to even dribble the ball just by reading a book? You're not. The best way for you to learn how to dribble the ball is to go and dribble the ball. If you spent four years just going on a team and learning how to play basketball, that would be much better than spending four years learning how to play basketball from a classroom or reading it out of a book. Not to say film study and stuff like that isn't important, it definitely is, especially at the higher levels, but before you get into any of that stuff, before you even understand any of that stuff, you have to know how to dribble the ball, shoot the ball, and all of that sort of thing. So this is a perfect example of one of those types of skills where going to college is not gonna help you at all. Number six on the list is going to be forestry. This one is ranked 485 out of 835 possible degrees. Now this one kind of has the combination of the problem that the environmental degrees as well as the agriculture degrees have, kind of both of those together. You're probably better off just entering the industry at the bottom and then working your way up and getting better and better jobs. It's also really popular because people love nature and who wouldn't want to get paid to be in forests and just walking around nature all the time. But the numbers on this one are even lower and that's why it ranks worse on the list. Okay, number five, are you ready for this one? Life sciences. <sighs> Okay, so I had to look up the definition on this one to figure out what the heck it is. It's the sciences concerned with the study of living organisms. That kind of sounds like biology to me. And biology degrees already have the issue of being a little bit too general. So this one's even more general than that. Now, when your knowledge is too general, employers and hiring managers are gonna have a really difficult time justifying why they're gonna hire you because they're not really sure how your knowledge is gonna help out the business. The whole point of going to college is to get specialized knowledge that's going to help you to become an expert in a certain area. So whenever you see degrees that are just way too general, kind of like this one, life science for instance, that's kind of a red flag in my opinion. Now the next two degrees are gonna be perfect examples of universities slapping the word science onto something else in order to make it sound like it's legit. Number four on the list is going to be ranked 665 out of 835 possible degrees and it's gonna be plant science. Plants are cool, right? They're harmless little critters that are colorful and fun to look at. It would be cool to major in that, right? Or how about number three, which is animal science, which ranks 680 out of 835. How about animals, even better than plants? I mean, who doesn't love animals? Now, some genius probably started a program like this. A bunch of people were interested in it because it sounded cool, and then it started to spread across the country. I'm not saying that these things aren't cool or worth studying, but it comes to getting an actual degree in this. The purpose of getting a degree is in order to get a job later on. And this one has some of the worst numbers on the entire list you're gonna have a very hard time finding employment. But it's not anywhere near as bad as the next one on the list, which is by far the worst, and that is mortuary science. This one ranks 744 out of 835 options. That's pretty bad, and it's hard to imagine a science degree that ranks much worse than some of the art degrees even, but this is one of them. If you're interested in becoming a mortician and running a funeral home or a morgue or something along those lines, a quick Google search will tell you that morticians don't even have to get a bachelor's degree. Most of them just have an associate's. Never mind having a degree specifically in mortuary science. This is a totally unnecessary major. Now this one does have the worst statistics on the entire list, but I didn't rank it as number one because the next one is really bad, almost as bad as this one, but it's also an incredibly popular major as well. And that is going to be exercise science. This one ranks 740 out of 835 possible degrees. And every year, 16,000 people graduate with an exercise science degree in the United States. Now they all probably go into it thinking that they're gonna have a lot of job opportunities that open up for them. And this is one of the worst on the list when it comes to the numbers. Now a lot of them go into it thinking that they'll become a fitness instructor after they graduate. And that's great. According to BLS, there's 356,000 jobs available and it's growing at 13%, which is really good. The only problem here is that the average fitness instructor only has to have a high school diploma. You definitely don't need to go to college in order to learn these skills. The market is already pretty saturated. There's a ton of people graduating with this degree. And at the end of the day, people only care about the results that you can get them. They don't care about you babbling on and on about this study or that study. No, they don't care about any of that. I can't understand the words you're saying. All they really care about is, can you get them in shape 
can you make it fun? And how much is it gonna cost? So if you go into this degree, you're probably going to be wasting a ton of time as well as money. Now, I hope I didn't offend anyone or anything like that. I'm just trying to give you guys the honest truth about the reality of this situation. A lot of college degrees out there are simply not worth it. But there's a few things that I wanna talk about when it comes to science degrees specifically that I think are especially important. The number one thing is you want to make sure you know what career or what industry that you're going into. You need to have that goal in mind. You need to know where you're going. You don't just want to get a degree and then you'll be like, oh, I'll figure out the job afterwards. A degree is meant to teach you specialized skills that will help you in certain careers. So if you don't know what career you're going for, you're not going to know what skills that you need to learn. You're also not going to know who to network with or what jobs would be good and look good on a resume or what you know groups that you should join. All these things will become very clear when you know what career you're going for. You can contact a person who's already doing that career and ask them what their opinion on it is as well. You can ask them questions like, what double majors would be good? Or what minor would be good? What skills should I learn? What looks impressive to somebody hiring on a resume? Now, once you have a really good idea of the career that you wanna go for, you can then reverse engineer it and figure out what steps you need to take in order to get there. Those steps might involve getting a college degree, and that's great. Sometimes those steps might not involve getting a college degree. You don't even have to get one. I think the most common example of that is getting a criminology degree in order to become a police officer. Totally unnecessary. You you don't have to get that degree, yet tens of thousands of people fall for that every single year. Now, after you've researched the steps that it's gonna take in order for you to get to your goal, then you can make a really good plan in order to get there. You're not gonna just be like a feather floating in the wind, you know, hoping that you can possibly land on a good job opportunity after you graduate. You're gonna know exactly where you're going and exactly what steps you need to take in order to get there. Now, the fourth tip that I'm gonna give is, especially when it comes to science degrees, this will likely involve focusing on skills work experience and networking. Now let's say you're just getting a general biology degree and you have no idea what career you're gonna go into, you just really enjoy biology. You're gonna have a very hard time focusing on the right skills that you should be learning in order to make yourself more appealing to someone who's gonna maybe hire you. You're also gonna have a very difficult time networking with the right people as well because you don't know what job you're going for. And you're also gonna have a hard time with work experience because you're likely just gonna get a general job that has nothing to do with your future.